During the Christmas season, there's limited sunlight, and the candle doesn't charge. That's why I decided to install a USB charging port, otherwise, this candle would be off most of the time. The circuit board comes off with a couple of screws, and soon we'll see what's on the other side. The connection is simple, with very few components. Besides the LED, there's a capacitor, a shocky diode, and some unlabeled microchip. That small microchip contains a microcontroller with a program that makes the LED flicker to simulate a flame. On the other side, there's only a 220 ohm resistor and a switch. Additionally, the device has a solar panel and a battery. Here's the constructed circuit diagram of the device. I wonder how the LED works with a nickel metal hydride battery, as it only has a voltage of 1.2 volts. I don't know if the diode and capacitor act as some kind of voltage boosting pump. The device uses the solar panel to charge the battery and also as a light sensor. We set the charging current to one tenth of the battery capacity, resulting in 15 milliamperes. We need a 3.8 volts voltage drop, achieved with a standard 270 ohm resistor. The charging time for the battery is long, but I don't have any other suitable charge controller. You can charge nickel metal hydride batteries indefinitely as long as the current is low enough. Let's test the current before we start building. The meter reads just under 14 milliamperes, in line with the calculations I made earlier. So, we can proceed. We put heat shrink tubing over the resistor for protection. It's still a bit unclear how to attach the USB connector, but the details will become clearer during the assembly. I had to extend the resistor with a wire, and now we solder the USB connector to the circuit board. This way, I try to avoid unnecessary wire clutter. Attach the circuit board back in place and test. For some reason, the USB analyzer claims the battery isn't charging. Either the USB charger refuses to provide such a small current, or the USB analyzer doesn't wake up with low current. Let's test with this clamp ammeter containing a hall sensor. It's a very reliable and sensitive meter. The clamp ammeter indicates that the battery is charging, but the USB analyzer doesn't wake up with such a small current. The charging current is as calculated earlier. Let's continue assembling the device. We still need to drill a hole for the charging port on the side of the base. This was supposed to be a small task, but there's quite a bit of adjustment involved. The hole needs to be in the right spot. I made a large blob from hot glue and attached the plug to the glue blob with double-sided tape. After various adjustments, I secured the attachment with hot glue to ensure the connector stays in place. Put the remaining parts in place and attach the base with screws. Finally, let's test that the connector fits, and the device is ready for use. I have another one like this, and if this proves to be functional, I'll make the same modification to it too. Thanks for watching.